I'm Jerry Ann Savell, and I want to welcome you to the show today. You know, life does not always go as planned. Even as Christians, hard things, difficult things can happen to us. Challenging times can happen to us. In the last several weeks, we've been talking about trusting God in those challenging times. That can we still say, I trust you, God, even in our darkest hour, can we still say, I trust you, God, that you can get me through this and walk with me through every step of the way. And today I have a friend with me who's been through a challenging time. And yet here he sits, still trusting God, still believing God, still preaching all over the world. Please welcome Bishop Gary Oliver. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here. Thank you, Jerry, and I'm glad to be here with you. Well, we met about five years ago. Yeah. Through Absolutely. your wife. Absolutely. And who's a dear friend of mine for years. Right. And then she introduced me to you. And you guys have been such a blessing in my life. Oh, and, well, thank you. you know, You've been I, a blessing to us. Thank you. And I know your story. I, do, I didn't know you when this happened to you, mm -hmm. but I know your story. And I look at you. Um, I go to your church on Wednesday nights right. when I can. Right. And you are on fire. This man can sing. This man can preach. <laughs> But I look at you and I think, wow, you've been through something as a parent, mm. six children. I can't even comprehend right. what you've been through, yet yep. you still trust, yeah. you still believe, you're still preaching. Walk us through that time in your life. Well, it was a very, very um, interesting time. It was a busy time in my life. Um, I had actually been on like a tour of the United States. Um, we did 90 days in a year, wow. sang for a million, 300,000 people in that time. Wow. Saw 50,000 people come to Jesus for the first time in those uh, dates that we were out. It was actually a headline between me and Carmen. Hmm. And I know that probably many of the people watching today will know Carmen. Yeah. And I know you know who he is. Mm -hmm. um, Carmen's been a good friend of mine. We actually went to the same church in Tulsa back in the day. Right. We were at Carlton Pearson's church. Now, and, uh, I have to add, though, you've mm -hmm. written a lot of songs yeah. that we've sang in church. In fact, yeah. the one I sang every Sunday, I told you this, <laughs> <laughs> every Sunday at my church, we sang Celebrate, Celebrate Jesus. Jesus. That song has yes. gone all over the world. It actually has. In fact, I have a recording of that in Russian. Wow. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, because, and, and you know, that's, that's something that is a very, very intriguing part of my life because I grew up, you know, in a little holiness setting, mm -hmm. Pentecostal. You know, I was a holiness kid and we just didn't do uh, much marketing. We didn't know anything about that kind of stuff. And uh, so... I was praying one time and asking the Lord, where does my wealth come from? Mm -hmm. And while I'm praying, all of the songs I had written started going through my mind. And mm -hmm. I said, well, God, I don't know how to do that. And, you know, there's, I, I feel like there's always somebody watching who is saying, I don't know how to get to that next step. Mm -hmm. And I told God, I don't know how to do that, so you're going to have to do it for me. And it was like God saying to me, I've just been waiting on you to say that. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to get out of the way. Yeah. And I think sometimes we try to get in God's way too much. And some there's a, there's a great part of rest in all of this that mm -hmm. we're talking about today. Yeah. That's vital and very important. But anyway, Celebrate Jesus was the first song of mine that got recorded wow. uh, by Integrity, mm -hmm. uh, Hosanna music back in the day, Integrity Hosanna, mm -hmm. and uh, Don Moen uh, recorded it. Wow. And so that song literally did go all over the world, but it was, it was a lot of fun. And a lot of people know that you probably sang it at Easter time, you mm -hmm. know. Like, Isn't that so. when you wrote it, you said for a children's Yeah, for program? a little children's program. One of the uh, children's directors at our church came to me and said, hey, we need a song to let the kids know that Easter is a wonderful time and that, you know, Good Friday is a wonderful time, even though that our Lord Jesus died. How can they celebrate Jesus? And I said, hold on a minute. I think you got the song right there. And I ran to the piano and I started singing that. That's and amazing. And played it through the first time and then later added the verses well, to Well, I love you, but I got tired of that song. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I got tired of that song. <laughs> we sing it every Sunday, but no. So you were at a place in your life, accomplished, You've mm -hmm. accomplished a lot of things, had success in your life. 
loving God, serving God, Absolutely. traveling all over the world yet. Yet, I get a call on a Friday night and I'm having a feeling that something is terribly wrong. I don't know what it is. And I had been out with a friend of mine who is a pastor and we had taken some horses to the mountain and rode horses. And I just had this feeling that I needed to get home. Something was wrong. I get home and um, the mother of my children and I were married at that time. And she told me something is very wrong. We need to pray for Brandon. And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, I just saw him walk in our bedroom, but he was falling as he was walking. Mm -hmm. And his head was really narrow like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, at one o'clock, the phone rang. We prayed right then. And I just told the Lord, I trust you. This is your son. Mm -hmm. He was your son before he was mine. You gave him to me. He's a gift to me. But God, I thank you for this boy. And I believe that you've got your hand on him and you are going to you're going to complete whatever needs to be done in his life. And we trust him. So we just turn him over to you. Wow. And at one o'clock in the morning, we get that call. And when the phone rang, I knew what was going on. Mm. And uh, needless to say, we lost Brandon in a car accident that night where the car had spun out of control. He was in the back seat. There was one young man driving the car uh, who was underage. They had just ran a friend home around the corner. Oh. And they were coming right back to this little high school party with all these kids and uh, there was no drugs there was no alcohol involved you know that everybody always assumes when mm -hmm. it's kids you know yeah. there was nothing like that because I questioned the police two or three times like yeah. you know tell me what was going on mm -hmm. they said now everything was very clean the kids were clean but the boy just lost control of the car spun out caught the front bumper on a tree and slammed the car into a tree and when it hit that tree that back window exploded brandon was sitting in the back seat he's tall like me six foot two and uh he's sitting there and that window exploded his head flies out and catches between the car oh. and the tree and he was instantly gone wow so 17 you're, years old your life at that moment it radically changed. changed it changed forever radically changed. i can't imagine yeah. well when we come back i want Bishop Gary to tell us how he got through the darkest time mm. in his life and how he can be here today, mm. the man that he is, still believing and still trusting. So watch this announcement and we'll be right back in just a few moments. Now is the time to start trusting God and walking in His promise. In the powerful three CD teaching, God is everything you need Him to be, Jerry Savelle uncovers truth that will help you develop faith and trust God to be your refuge, your provider, and your comforter. God promises that He will meet our every need, spiritual, physical, and material. In the inspiring book, How God Supplies Your Every Need, you will learn to operate in principles that will revolutionize your thinking and cause you to experience God's best for your life. Also included in this package is the revolutionary CD teaching from Jerry Ann Savell, Trusting God in Challenging Times. Don't wait. It's time to take your faith and trust in God to the next level. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org and request the Trust in God package featuring God is everything you need Him to be, How God Supplies Your Every Need, and trusting God in challenging times. Open your heart and ready yourself to walk in the freedom that comes from trusting God today. I want to encourage you to go to jerrysavelle.org right now and order the products that we're offering. You know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You can never get enough teaching. So I encourage you to go to the website now and order this product. We're talking to Bishop Gary Oliver about a time that he went through in his life the most devastating time that you, I can't imagine as a parent <clears throat> getting that phone call. What did you do? What did you do? Instantly, um, you know, I, I just jumped when I heard the phone ring and began grabbing clothes, you know, just started putting on. Uh, found out where, what hospital he was taken to. Went to the hospital and of course they wouldn't let us see him. And, um, for that I'm grateful now. Yeah. At that moment, um, I had everything going off inside me. Mm -hmm. You know, anger, fear, frustration, um, deep sorrow, 
uh, so many feelings that yeah. you're almost numb. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what you're feeling. Yeah. So I'm trying to call my family. My mother was still living at the time and she lived alone. I didn't want to call her. So I called my oldest brother and his wife, told them and word spread to the family. Uh, and I have to say, uh, Jerry Ann, that, you know, it's sometimes it takes going through these tough moments to realize how much we are loved mm -hmm. and how much God loves us. We actually had the homegoing service at um, a studio there in Nashville and um, at the TBN studios. And we had the service there at their uh, Hendersonville location. Bishop Jakes flew in and preached um, mm -hmm. the, the funeral for us. Rod Parsley was there, did an altar call. All in all, when we got that played back on um, video mm -hmm. and, and we aired parts of it, not, not the whole thing, but we aired parts of it. Um, when we aired it, 1,200 17 year olds called in to the studios and gave their life to the Lord. Wow. And so I said, God, I count my son yes. as seed yes. sown into the kingdom and you will multiply it and raise it back up. That's amazing. So I believe that I have many sons that I don't even know yet. Yes. Um, but when you talk about making it through that and how do you keep trusting God in yeah. these moments? Because um, you had to at some point, you got angry. I mean, you, oh, were, yeah. you were questioning. Oh, yeah. There were a whole lot of whys. Yeah. Why did this happen to me? Why did Absolutely. this happen to my son? I remember one of the biggest moments for me in that why process uh, I was on the back porch of my home uh, in Nashville and I'm just sitting there and I mean you just it's like for days you just can't stop the tears you know mm -hmm. it's just tears are just flowing and I'm like God why me why why Brandon why I had you know you have so many dreams for your children mm -hmm. you see their little lives their their desire mm -hmm. brandon just knew he was going to do movies and i'm sure he would have if yeah. he would have lived because that was his whole thing he loved to act mm -hmm. he he just loved being in front of people and being on a stage he was great at it too and uh i said god why me and god spoke something to me that floored me jerry and i fell off of my couch on the floor i said god why me and God spoke to me and said, because I trusted you. Mm. And it blew me away. And I'm like, I know I'm supposed to trust you, but you trust me for what? Mm -hmm. What do you trust me for? And God began to speak to my spirit and tell me, I trusted you to keep your faith. Wow. I trusted you to keep your praise. Mm. I couldn't have let this happen to someone else because they would have lost their belief in me. Mm -hmm. But I trusted you to keep believing me, yeah. to keep trusting me and to stay connected to me because I will show you where all this is going. Wow. And I'm telling you just in that moment to know that God trusted me mm -hmm. in a moment like that and trusted me with the gift of a 17 year old son mm -hmm. and then have him taken away. It was, it was a most uh, humbling moment. But I think that the greater picture for me is that if we knew all the answers, there's a whole lot of scriptures we could do away with. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. what the enemy meant for evil, God turned for my good. We could do away with that one if mm -hmm. we knew all the answers, you know. Yeah. Uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. We could do away with that if mm -hmm. we knew all the answers, you know. Uh, for we know that all things work together for those who... I wouldn't need that scripture if I knew all the answers. Right. And there's something about being able to walk with God in the mystery of God. Yeah not knowing what you're up to, mm -hmm. not knowing what you're doing, but yet I still trust you. You mm -hmm. know, Deuteronomy 29, 29 is a very powerful scripture that talks about the idea that the secret things belong to God, mm -hmm. but the things that he's revealed, he's given to those to us and our sons forever. Mm -hmm. There's parts of God that he exposes to us and lets us know about himself, but there are other things that he keeps secret. Mm -hmm. And we used to sing an old song, uh, we'll understand it better by and by. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a whole lot about just walking with God and the not knowing yeah. and being able to keep my faith in Him because uh, faith 
first of all, and, and I think your, your uh, title for this, for this series is perfect because it's really trust. It's not even faith. But faith works from the foundation of trust. Right. They go hand in hand. Yeah. If I don't have trust, I can't have faith. Right. Trust has got to be a part of it. And trusting God when I can't trace Him. Right. Trusting God when I can't find Him in this situation. And um, you got to quit asking why. You, you really gotta, do. you got to not go there in yeah. your head anymore. Why this happened to me. You have to find a place of just saying, you know what, God, I don't understand it, but I do trust you. Mm -hmm. And I know that your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. And there comes a time in your life where you just say, you know what, I'm going to let this thing rest because mm -hmm. I thought one of the toughest scriptures that in the, in the whole of the New Testament, um, and it was something Jesus said. I thought it was the harshest thing I'd ever heard anybody say. Let the dead bury the dead. Hmm. I'm like, wow, that's kind of harsh, isn't it? Yeah. And I didn't understand that until my son died. Hmm. And I realized if I don't let the dead bury the dead, I will die too. Mm -hmm. Because you'll get so caught up in that thing. Yeah. Despair can take over. Oh, my God. Yeah. Depression, despair, uh, just every kind of emotion you can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a place where you have to get to where you have to say, you know what? My emotions are not going to run my life anymore. Right. Yeah. My faith is going to run my life. Yeah. And my trust in God is going to run my life. So there's a grace that you tap into. It's a grace I don't want to know. No, you sure don't. But it's a grace that you it tapped a, into to walk you through, to get up mm -hmm. the next morning yeah. and the next morning and still fulfill the call of God on your life. Yeah. And you still had other children, too, yes. that you had to. Yes. And I, I will say that for three months, I couldn't get on a plane to go anywhere. Yeah. For three months, I totally shut everything down. Um, but I will say that in looking at my other children, I thought, I know where Brandon is. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that's a finale. Mm -hmm. That's done. He is laid to rest. But what if I lost my living children and they're still alive, but I lost them because of me being so caught up in Brandon yeah. that I disconnect from them. Right. And now I have living children who are dead. To I've me. heard of that happening with yeah. people, that they get so caught up over here in the despair that their other children are just kind of left. Yes, and then they cut off and it's, it's now you have living children who are dead. But your occupation Mm -hmm. was Jesus. You're yes. out, you're out yes. preaching and ministering and singing about a God that heals and restores. Right. And you still had to go on. And how did you do that? I mean, worship had to play a huge part. Worship, worship, worship. That's yeah. all I can tell you is yeah. that I worshiped him. And there, that yielding of, of my heart to just say, God, I don't know exactly what you're doing. And I don't know why this is going on. But I'm going to praise you in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to praise you in spite of what I feel. Yeah. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to trust your word. I'm going to take you at your word. And one of the other things that I really found was very, very powerful for me uh, was to stop saying what I was feeling, but start saying what the word said about me. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And, you know, it's like. Uh, and to go to God and begin to tell God, you know, I don't feel good today and I don't feel this and I don't feel like I'm going to make it. And I just feel mm -hmm. so depressed, God, and all that stuff. I stopped doing that. I started going to God and said, and just telling him the joy of the Lord is my strength today. Yeah. And I thank you that you are restoring my joy right now. Yeah. I thank you that my joy is coming again. Thank you that my peace is coming in. Thank you because you are my hope. Mm -hmm. In you is where my hope lies. Yeah. And the more I said things like that to God, the stronger my will to go forward yeah. came alive. You got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Absolutely. You have to. It's what David did. Yes. You know, it's the same type of thing. You just, there's a moment where you have to realize. And I'm going to tell you something. You don't get it from somebody laying hands on you. You know, people can speak over your life. They can say things over you. 
um, you know, e e even the prophetic word of the Lord, which we all believe in and mm -hmm. we take hold of that, it can come. But until you come into agreement with God's word and agreement with that prophetic word, you're going to stay right where you are. Yeah. And you have to come into agreement with God's word and say, God, I'm just going to trust you in spite of. So, I, you know, there are people I know who, who just are, are going through things that are way more challenging uh, than what we can even imagine. I have a very good friend who lost a son. And uh, for five years, she spent every night with her son because he was born with a hole in his heart. Mm -hmm. And he had a heart attack night after night after night. My son was one night and was out. Mm -hmm. For five years, holding on to her baby, not knowing yeah. when's going to be the next night. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure that there's somebody watching right now that's in some sort of situation like that mm -hmm. and thinking, how do I make it through this? And I'm telling you, how you make it through it is you make it through it by your praise and by your worship, by your trust. Your praise, it's, it's, it's easy to praise God for what He's done because mm -hmm. we all can go back and look through our life and see the history mm -hmm. of what God has done. We can praise God for that. And it's easy to praise God for something I can see right in front of me. Right. But when we begin to praise God for what he's about to do. And that sacrifice of praise. Yes. When you, you don't feel you don't like, feel like you it. You don't feel like doing it. That's, that's and right. And you can offer that to God. That's, Absolutely. That's huge. And you know, there's, there's, there's power in that because this is something we get to do on this side that we'll never get to do in heaven. Right. Because in heaven, they won't, there will be no despair. Mm -hmm. In heaven, there will be no doubt. In heaven, there will be no confusion. So right now, I get to offer God a praise that is seasoned mm -hmm. with all of this stuff trying to creep into my heart. Yeah. And instead of taking it and using it as something negative, just use it as seasoning on your praise. Yeah. And let it season your praise. This is a praise that I get to give God that I will not be able to give Him in glory. Yeah. So this is the only time in my life that I can stand here in a moment of hurt and pain and confusion and everything else and just sprinkle all of that on my heart and hold it close to me mm -hmm. and say, God, I don't understand it, but I praise you anyway. Yeah. And let that season my praise mm -hmm. in this moment. That's so good. And here you are, what, 20 something? 20 years later. 20 years later. Yeah. Still standing, yeah. still preaching, still serving a God. I mean, you can get through anything and everything. You can get through it. You don't get over it. No. You get through it. You don't get over it because over is, is an impossibility, but through is powerful. Yeah. I want to read this scripture to you guys. This is uh, Psalms 23. We all know it, but this yes. is Psalms Now version. And it says, The Lord is my constant companion. There mm -hmm. is no need that he cannot fulfill. It says, Whether I'm in the mountaintops or I'm in the valley, he is ever present with me. He is close beside me. It says, He will not leave me. When the pain is severe, he mm -hmm. is near to comfort. When the burden is heavy, he is there to lean upon. When mm -hmm. depression darkens my soul, he touches me with eternal joy. When I feel empty and alone, he fills the aching vacuum with mm -hmm. his power. I love this. I love that. My security is in his promise to be near me always and in the knowledge that he will never let me go. I'm telling yes. you, whatever you're going through so right good. now, he is there. He can walk you through the most difficult, the Absolutely. most challenging time. Pastor Gary is here. He's been through it. And look, he sits here with mm -hmm. joy. Mm -hmm. He's still accomplishing all that God's called him to do. And you can do the same. Absolutely. I don't care where you're at in life right now. You can make it. You can get through it when Amen. you put your trust in him your complete trust in Him, then He can give you the perfect peace that you need. Amen. We're going to take a break. Watch this announcement, and we'll be right back. Now is the time to start trusting God and walking in His promise. In the powerful three-CD teaching, God is Everything You Need Him to Be, Jerry Savelle uncovers truth that will help you develop faith and trust God to be your refuge, your provider, and your comforter. God promises that He will meet our every need, spiritual, 
physical and material. In the inspiring book, How God Supplies Your Every Need, you will learn to operate in principles that will revolutionize your thinking and cause you to experience God's best for your life. Also included in this package is the revolutionary CD teaching from Jerry Ann Savell, Trusting God in Challenging Times. Don't wait. It's time to take your faith and trust in God to the next level. Call or go online to jerrysavell.org and request the Trust in God package featuring God is Everything You Need Him to Be, How God Supplies Your Every Need, and Trusting God in Challenging Times. Open your heart and ready yourself to walk in the freedom that comes from trusting God today. Psalms 37 tells us that if we trust in the Lord, we delight in Him, we commit to Him, and we rest in Him, that He will be there with us through anything and everything that we go through in life. Pastor Gary shared with us um, a difficult opportunity and challenge and trial he went in his life. And if you're there right now, whatever you're going through, I'm telling you, God can be your comfort. He can be your peace. And I'm going to ask you, Gary, to pray over everybody that's watching. Absolutely. That they feel that, that supernatural peace that passes all understanding Amen. come over them right now. You said something powerful in Psalm 37 where it talks about rest in the Lord. You know, the rest of God is so simple, but yet it feels so complex mm -hmm. to find that place of rest. But that place of rest is where you commit everything to Him and know that it's about Him. It's on His name now. This is not up to you to prove anything. You go ahead and just lay all of your burdens, cast all of your cares upon the Lord because He cares for you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for every person that is watching and God, for everyone connected right now to this story. We ask God that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding would surround their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, that you would bring them that supernatural peace to them. Father, you said, Jesus, you said it like this. You said, my peace I leave to you. And it is not a peace that the world would give, but it is the peace that you leave. That is a peace that comes from knowing that you completed and perfected the will of God in your life. So Father, we receive that peace. And I pray for those who are watching right now, God, they're going through a hard time with the loss of a loved one. Father, just, just pick them up today and wrap your arms around them. May they know that they are firmly in your grip. Thank you, Jesus. May they know that you have them and that your love surrounds them. Father, we thank you for supernatural grace and we thank you for wisdom for our days ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm so glad to be you. here. If Thank you'd you. like more information about Bishop Gary Oliver and his ministry, that uh, his website will be on the station now. So I hope that you'll join me again next week to finish up this series that we're on. And I hope that you have a great day. I'll see you again soon. Bye.